how to export assets with C++ in Unreal. And actually, you're gonna see that exporting assets is way simpler than importing them. So let's get to it. And here we are in our other file, and today it's a pretty simple one because we only have one function. We have the export asset function right here. For the export asset function to work, we need to provide the path of the asset we're going to export, so a path of the asset in your content browser. And then you also need to provide the path of where you want to save the asset on your computer, so anywhere on your computer. And that's it. The function is just going to export the asset at that location, and that's about it. Obviously, this function is not going to work in a package game. It's just going to work in the editor, because only the editor have access to the assets in the content browser. Here we go. So that's it for the header file. Now we're going to go in the CPP and in there we're going to need a bunch of includes. So here they are. We're going to need first the GC object the scope guard and that's just because sometimes during the export process the export tasks get destroyed by the garbage collector. Yeah. That's not fun. It's never happened to me, but it's something they always do everywhere else in the engine, so I'm just going to replicate that behavior in case that happens. Mmm, yeah. The garbage collector is not fun sometimes, so we have to deal with it. Okay, so that's gonna be for that, and then we have the asset export task, so the task that we're going to export, then we have the exporter that is going to process that export task, so that's why we need that one too, and then we have the possibility to add some additional export options based on the file types. Most of the file types don't need any additional export option, so we're not gonna need to add a bunch of those. And actually, those two are the only ones I found in the engine. So we have first the FBX export option and also the GLTF export options. So these options are just gonna be used in the case that you want to export an FBX or a GLTF file. If you don't want to support those types of files, you don't need to include those two's include right here because they are just to configure the FBX and the GLTF formats. Here we go. So these are all the includes I'm gonna need. They are in the core and engine on really the NGLTF exporter module. So let's go make sure that they are all inside the build.cs file. So core object engine on really the core object unreal unreal ed. And finally, I have my GLTF exporter right here at the bottom. That one is a new one. I just added it. So make sure to also add it in your case. There we go. GLTF exporter. Perfect. Let's go back in the CPP. And now we can finally take a look at the export. And the first step to export an asset, it's going to actually be loading the asset because right now we just have the path and the exporter doesn't really know what to do with the path so we're just gonna load it for it and actually at the same time we're gonna make sure that the asset is valid because if the asset doesn't exist obviously we won't be able to export it so asset to export is equal to static load object the class doesn't really matter and then we provide the path of the asset we want to export and that's just going to load the asset you're going to export as I said we're gonna make sure that that asset is valid otherwise we're not gonna be able to export it so here if it's equal to null I'm just going to return right away and not try to export it because the asset doesn't exist. Good. Okay, we have an asset and it's valid. Now it's time to find which exporter is going to export that asset. Because even though we only have two exporters that have different export options, there's a bunch of different exporters in the engine and we have to figure out which one we want to use. And the way we're going to do that is by using the extension of the file you're trying to save on your computer. That's just the way Unreal does it all over the place. So why not just recreating the same logic? So using the destination path, I'm going to extract the extension of that path. So F paths get extension, the extension of the destination path, and I'm going to make it lowercase just because later on we're going to do a few comparison to figure out which type of file we're going to export. And if we make sure that it's lowercase, the comparison are always going to work. Here we go. I have my extension right here. Using that extension, I can ask Unreal to give me which exporter should be able to export that file type. So here in U exporter, I can do a find exporter, providing it the asset that we want to export and also the extension we want to use for that asset type, Unreal is going to compare them both together and see if they match. So if it's a static mesh, can we export it as an FBX? Yes. Okay, good. That's good. We should be able to export that file using this exporter right here. And that's what it's going to do. It's going to try to find an exporter that matches both the asset type and also the extension that we are trying to export. Good. We have an exporter or maybe not. If it didn't find an exporter, then the exporter is not going to be valid. And that's why right here, I'm just going to make sure that it is valid. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to export anything because, well, we don't have an exporter. Yeah, okay, so let's just make sure the exporter is valid, and if it's the case, now we're ready to go. We're ready to start exporting our asset. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit right here, and now that we have an exporter, the exporter, its job is to process an export task, and we don't have a task right now. So let's create a task, a quick task right here. So 
create a new export task, a new asset export task, pointer, new object is going to give us an export task. That export task, as I said at the beginning, can be potentially destroyed by the garbage collector during the export. So that's why right here, I'm just going to protect it using FGC object scope guard. So I'm just going to create myself a little scope guard with that variable inside it. That way, it's just going to protect that variable until the export is completed, or actually until I'm out of the function. And that's it. We now created an export task and the task is ready to be used and it's not going to be destroyed during the process. That's always a good plus. So export task right here. And the next step is to link it with the exporter because right now it's just two independent objects that we have right here and right there. So I'm just going to link them both together. And actually we have to do it in both directions. So inside the exporter, we can set the export task and vice versa. Inside the export task, we can set the exporter. Okay, it's a little bit redundant, but we have to do it in both directions. Here we go. Now we have an exporter and export task and they know each other. Perfect. The next step is to configure the export task because right now we're not exporting anything. We're just processing an export task that is empty and that's not what we want. So we're just going to configure that export task just like that. So inside the export task, we have to provide which object we want to export. In our case, it's going to be the asset to export. Where do you want to save that asset on your computer? Well, it's going to be the destination path. Then do you want to replace the file if there's already one there? Uh, yes, in my case, I'm just going to re-export on top of an existing file. Then I have two little variables right here that is going to let me decide if I want to have a pop-up or not to ask for more options from the user. So let's say where you want to save on the computer or what options you want to use for the export. But in our case, we're going to provide everything. So we don't want any pop-up for the user. And actually, I don't want my process to be stopped by a user input. I want to be able to export as many assets as I want without having the user behind the screen clicking, clicking clicking, clicking. It's just going to export everything in one go. So here I'm just going to say that I don't want any prompt. So be prompt equal to false. And also I'm going to say that it's going to be an automated job. So automated is equal to true. Those two together are going to make sure that I don't have any pop-ups during my export process. Then we can decide if we want to use a file archive. In our case, no, we want to use the destination file type that we provided as input. Do you want to write an empty file? So if the export failed or is trying to export a file that has zero information in it. Well, we don't want to save that file. That file is completely useless and it's probably just going to be a failed export anyway. So we don't really care about that file. So I'm going to set it to false. And finally, the last two options are to decide which objects we want to export during that export process. That's mainly useful for, let's say, a level or a level sequence in which you have a bunch of different objects inside them. Then you can decide if you want to export only the selected ones or ignore some specific objects from those assets while doing the export. But in our case, we're not going to use those today. So I'm just going to leave them empty. Here we go. Okay. We now have configured all the default parameters for our export tasks, but then we have the file specific parameters. So for example, we have the FBX parameters. If you're trying to export an FBX, maybe you have some extra parameters that you want to set inside the export task to customize your export. And that's what we're going to do right here. So if the extension is equal to FBX, it means that we're going to export an FBX file. And when we do that, well, we can use the UFBX export options to configure that export. So UFBX export option equal to new object UFBX export option. That's going to give us an option object, option object that we can then configure. And that's what I'm going to do right here. So these are all the same settings that you're going to see in the user interface if you're trying to export an FBX directly from Unreal. So uh, force front axis, vertex color, level of detail, collision, things like that. So these are all the same settings that you're going to see in the editor when you're trying to export an FBX file. And that's it. Now you can configure your FBX export properly. And and once that's done, you can set those options directly inside the task. So export task option is equal to option. Here we go. Now the task knows what to do when trying to export your FBX file. And on top of the FBX file, there's also the GLTF file type or also GLB, which is the binary format of the GLTF. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit, I'm going to see that I'm going to do the same thing in those cases. So I'm going to create an object that is going to contain all the options for my GLTF export. So view GLTF export option new object. It's going to create a new option object. That object is going to be configurable. So I can set all the variables in there. I'm not going to go through all of them. Obviously, they are the same as in the user interface. If you're trying to find that user interface in Unreal, you can just try to export a level or a level sequence that's going to give you all those options. And then once it's configured, I can simply set the options back inside the export task and the export task is going to know what to do with those options. And that's it. These are the two file types that could have different options. You don't actually have to set 
set them. If you don't want to, you can use the default options if you want. But in my case, I'm just going to set them because, well, I want to show you an example. So good. We've set all the different options and now the export task should be ready to be processed. And that's exactly what we're going to do right here. Now that it's ready to be processed, we're just going to process it. So run asset export task, providing it the export task we want to process. The function is going to try to export your asset and then it's going to let you know if it worked or not. And actually, based on that, I'm going to give a bit more information to my user. So if it was not a success right here, I'm just going to say that, well, first it was a fail. I was not able to export my assets. And the reasons why I was not able to export my asset are actually saved inside the export task. After the process, the export task has a little variable right here that contains all the error messages that happen during the process. So it's a bunch of strings. And here I'm just going to combine all those strings together and return them to my user. And actually, I'm not going to see any errors today because all my exports are going to work. But in the case that your export failed, it's going to tell you why. And that's pretty cool. But that just if it failed. Otherwise, if it didn't fail, it was a success and we were able to export our asset properly. And now it's time to jump in Unreal to test all that. And here we are in Unreal. And today I have a little level, doesn't really matter. And I also have a bunch of other assets that we're going to try to export. So a level sequence, a static mesh, skeletal mesh, a sound, and a texture. And we're going to try to export all that using a user interface as usual, which I have right here. It's pretty simple. I just have the path of the asset I want to export right here. I have a few examples right here on the right that I'm going to select in the combo box. And then in the destination, same thing. I have all the different file names that I want to try to save on my computer. And when I click on export asset, it's going to try to process the selected options. So that's you're going to see in the graph right here. When I click on export button, it's going to try to export the asset using the current selection. So the asset path and the destination path on my computer, that's going to try to export the asset to that location. And that's it. The user interface is super simple. And now we're going to try to see if it actually works. So run in the utility widget the right here. I'm going to move Unreal to the side because I want to be able to see the temp folder right here that we're going to try to export our assets into. And then I'm going to start by an asset that actually shows something in my Windows Explorer. So let's say a texture. I'm going to start by a texture. I'm going to try to export it as a PNG. So my texture, the PNG, export the asset. It says that it was a success. And hey, I have my texture right here on the left. That worked. Then I can do the same for the sound. So export my sound to a wave file. So here we go. Export wave. I have my sound. Perfect. That worked. Then the next one I can try, let's say, is the skeletal mesh. Sure, why not? Let's try to export the skeletal mesh as an FBX and it worked. I have my FBX right here. I can do the same thing for my static mesh. So static mesh.fbx export. Here we go. I have my static mesh. And the last two ones I can try to export is the level sequence and the world. So we're going to try to export both of those. For the level sequence, I'm going to try to export it as a GLTF file because that's a supported file type for that type of asset. So the level sequence can be exported as a GLTF. So if I export my asset right now, doo -doo -doo, it's taking a bit of time, but hey, I have my exported asset right here. I have my binary, I have my GLTF here, and a few other files that are probably going to help processing that GLTF file. I don't really know how they work, so I'm just going to assume that they work properly. And the last asset type I'm going to try to process today is the world. So I have my world right here. I'm going to try to export it as a NoBG. Why not? And I'm going to click export asset. That also takes a bit of time. And hey, I have my OBG right here. Perfect. Now now I know how to export assets with C++ in Unreal and that's going to be it for today's video. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.